Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Great to have you back at another episode of Celebrating Act 2. And we are with Dr. Liz Lister, our favorite doctor. How are you doing, hey. Dr. Liz? Dr. Thank Liz, great to see you again. Likewise. Thank you so much. I, uh, If you don't mind, I've got a uh, topic for us today. Mm. I know that... Um, you are into uh, big into supplements. You have your branded supplements. You're as a doctor. I personally, I think that's unusual. A lot of doctors don't deal with nutrients at all. Um, but I'm a big supplement fan. I take lots of supplements, vitamins and minerals and other things. Art, on the other hand, is not. He's no, a, no, no, a no, basic no, no, kind no. of. Because of Doctor Liz, I'm a big E supplement dude. So I'm just okay. gonna. I, I, I'm E all the way. But yeah, not much more than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I stand corrected slightly because I take handfuls of supplements. But what I want to mention today and ask you about is fish oil. I'm, mm. I'm big on fish oil. I take it because it's an anti-inflammatory. But of course, I keep reading about mercury poisoning in fish in the sea, and, you know, fish oil is not good for you for that reason. On the other hand, fish oil is an anti-inflammatory. So I don't really know what to believe. Where do you stand on fish oil? Is it good or not? Definitely good. Good. Fish oil is definitely good. It's been shown to help with heart health, vision, skin, brain cognition. It's, uh, yeah. So it, it definitely comes out good in my view. Uh, sometimes studies are a little challenging to look at because we have a tendency, there's a tendency to do su studies on supplements the same way they do studies on drugs. And supplements don't work in isolation. They work in synergistic ways with each other. So it does end up a little bit different. But it's definitely important. We need omega-3s. They're called essential fatty acids. And the reason they're called essential is because our human bodies cannot manufacture those fatty acids. We have to take them in. There are some that are from plants. The ALA, the alpha linolenic acid, is the omega-3 from plants. But the EPA and the DHA that we know are good for the brain, as well as all those other systems that we mentioned, are m most easily gotten from fish. All right, so is there this this danger of mercury poisoning? I, I, you know, I've never seen any bottled fish oil that ever mentions that. How do you how do you know? Indeed. Well, this is one supplement that I really ask people to get a good quality brand. I don't tell people not to get their supplements at Costco except fish oil. I really recommend people not get it at a wholesale, large level, like discount type of place. This is not one to uh, to try to do that level of savings on. It can be avoided. You can avoid the toxins. There are toxins in the oceans. Uh, pesticides make it into the ocean. Plastics make it into the oceans. And so, for example, the brand that I have in my office for my patients uh, and that I use is from off the coast of Chile that's considered the least industrialized fishing coastline that uh, that we have cold water wild caught all the elements of a, a good uh, high quality super purified product that's what you want to have in a fish oil okay so but let me ask you this uh, as you know I follow a, uh, a, a, a vegan diet uh, primarily uh, uh, motivated by health reasons, and I'm, I'm pretty strict with that. And um, uh, I'm under the <clears throat> belief that most of the omega-3 that I need, I'm actually getting from nuts and seeds. And um, uh, I just worry about the supplements. And first I heard that there is a really good clean place to get uh, fish oil free of mercury and other uh, heavy metals that have been just polluting the oceans for uh, uh, decades. Uh, so what about uh, vegans who've never, rarely strict vegans, 
will their life never have had fish oil? Are, are they getting enough omega threes uh, or not? That's a that is a question that we don't have the answers to just yet. I have never seen data talking about those those benefits that we know are from fish oil. I have not, to my knowledge, seen studies yet, long term studies doing the right testing on people who have stayed vegan for decades at a time. So I'm just not sure about the answer to your question. I did remember though about the toxins that for example, on the brand that I carry, every single bottle has a QR code that people can scan and it takes you straight to the report where they actually will show you the measurements that they did, the testing on every single batch. So that's, that's my idea. This is a brand that goes from manufacturer to doctor to patient. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about pharmaceutical grade. Well, I'm going to give you, I'll give you this, uh, Dr. Liz. Uh, we have a, a long-term relationship far preceding the, uh, this show, uh, which is a delight to have these conversations with you. Uh, but I would suspect that if there were truly a, uh, if I needed more omega-3s and fish oil is obviously uh, 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 a supplement that's rich in that, uh, I would probably only get it from you or some kind of trusted source. Uh, so, uh, if, so if people want to find out more about the fish oil that you have and the, the fact that it is uh, toxin-free, uh, can they just uh, visit your website? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's right on there on the website. To say okay. a little bit more about the why it's important to have the fatty acids. And I also wanted to reiterate that the ALA isn't a form of omega-3s in, found in plants. Okay, so it's not that people who are vegan can not get omega-3s, they can. It's just more difficult to get enough. The normal dose, usually when we talk about the dosing, we talk about the EPA and the DHA, and we want it to be in the neighborhood of 1,000 milligrams. So that's a really good daily dose. That actually has been studied. Uh, one particular study looked at vision improvement and took about three or four months of taking one capsule. Well, it depends on what the milligrams are, but 1,000 milligrams a day for at least three months before people were able to see a difference, but they actually were able to notice a difference. So the fatty acids become part of the cell membrane of almost every cell in the body the tissues, the heart itself, the eye tissue, skin, all of those systems are benefited by having a really good level of phospholipids in the cell membranes uh, incorporate the oils that we, and the omega-3s that we take in. Great, great information. But, uh, you know, it brings to mind an, uh, one last question, and that is, I'm assuming that it would be better to get your omega-3 directly from fish. Or is that not true? I mean, is there a comparison? Usually, that's definitely the easiest way to get enough. Uh, also, I was saying 1,000 milligrams. 2,000 milligrams is fine. In other words, one capsule twice a day, if depending on the dose. But I always tell people to aim for, I recommend aiming for about 2,000 milligrams per day. And people who have cardiovascular issues can take as much as 4,000 milligrams per day. So it's probably pretty difficult to to get too much. Well, that's good to know. Good, well, okay. I appreciate that. Um, confirming my use of uh, fish oil supplements and uh, makes me feel a little better, but I'm gonna have to check my brand now. Exactly, mm. and a tip for all of our listeners is that fish oil should not smell fishy. It should oh, really? Fishy. It should taste like fish. It should just be, if it's that purified and it's nice and a fresh product, it should not smell or taste fishy. Another little tip for, on occasion, people will swallow the capsules and then later on, if they burp, they might taste a fishy flavor. Yeah. So mm. that should happen. But if it is happening, a little trick is to freeze the capsules because the oils themselves won't freeze. But when you ingest it, by the time it's soft enough to be a liquid, it's gonna be past the stomach and then that takes care of the burping problem. Cool, oh, what a cool trick. 
Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, Dr. Liz, thank you so much. We'll see you again soon, I hope. I hope so, too. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.